What's going on subscribers? This is SPP TV and I'm Rob. If you watched the last video, you see that we threw the 5.3 in the other night. Just kind of put it in there to sort of see how it's gonna fit and get a first look at it. Uh, obviously I still have to make the motor mounts and all that kind of stuff, but this is just the first kind of throw in. As you can see, I've kind of figured out that my power brake booster is a little tight there to fit the coils on probably so I'm probably gonna have to change the booster I'll probably get a smaller one off some kind of car have to hit up the junkyard I'm gonna pull the engine out again and then I want to clean the frame and stuff kind of get it all the grease off and that so that I have a clean surface to start working on and then I'll probably end up putting it back in and mocking it up again and then get ready to start making the engine mounts yeah so let's do it <laughs> Okay, so I got the engine uh, compartment or frame area all cleaned up really good. Here you can see. I just cleaned all the grease off. Like I said, it wasn't too bad to begin with. It's ready to do uh, any welding or cutting or anything that I have to do on it. I just cleaned up the valve covers and then I took the uh, flex plate off to make it easier to put the engine back in and out and in and out. So I test fit the engine in there and uh, it doesn't really want to like sit in there properly so I'll show you what the problem is if you take a look at the frame here here it's kind of in and then there it kicks out or well, it kicks out here it's uh, it's hitting the oil pan the oil pans nice and square but the uh, the frame is not so I'm gonna take the brake lines off and then I'm gonna cut part of that frame out and then after I'll have to just box it all back in. Sprayed the brake lines with WD-40, I'm letting it soak in a bit and I'm gonna get those off. So it's the next day. I ended up getting the brake lines off and that's all I ended up doing. I put the engine back in and I kind of marked it. So here, I'll show you what I did here. So if you can hopefully see down there, kind of like right where my finger is, that's where I have to cut it. You can see where the oil pan's touching and it won't allow it to move over anymore. I'm gonna pull the engine out right now and uh, I'm gonna cut that out with the cutoff wheel and then I'll test fit it again. Hopefully gonna try to use the Sawzall here to cut this. Got a nice fresh Sawzall blade to put in there. If this doesn't really work, I'll use the cutoff wheel. I got a good start going, but I think I'm going to switch in the cutoff wheel. As you can see, I cut that out. A uh, combination of the Sawzall and uh, cutoff wheel. And that's what worked the best. And what I ended up doing, I cut it probably more than I needed to, but instead of just making abrupt like, like that, I wanted to kind of make it a little smoother transition. So that's how I cut it. And of course I'm gonna box all that in. That's a lot 
nicer now. You know, once this is filled in, it'll be pretty much the same all the way. So now I'm gonna test fit the engine again, see how it fits now with that cutout. When you're doing something like this, if you can, definitely take the front end off. It makes a huge difference in uh, having room to maneuver. Especially if you know you gotta take the engine in and out 500 times. Well, I think that did it. I think she's in there. It fits perfect. It actually bolted to the transmission, no problem now. And there's lots of clearance around that edge of the oil pan where I just cut the cross member. Hopefully you can see how much clearance there is now. Like, I can actually, you know, you can see through it, so that's good. So that'll be really nice once I box it in there. Now I just have to get the engine like leveled in there nice. And then start making the engine mounts. Uh, subscribers actually sending me some adapter plates. Just the flat plates you bolt the mount to. I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do there because I have 2.8 S10 bases and then I had aftermarket S10 V8 mounts, so I don't actually have the upper factory mounts for a 2.8, so I could probably find some of those because that's kind of how those adapters work. Or what I might do is just make some uh, triangle tabs that's go that are gonna weld onto the plates that he gives me uh, that'll just mount it. It'll kind of make it like, hold on, I'll, I'll show you. This is what the... Um, the stock, like aftermarket for a V8 S10 ones are to adapt it to the 2.8 mount. So basically he's sending me like that flat piece and then there's tabs. I guess I could just cut these ones up probably and use them, but it seems like kind of a waste because these are good V8 mounts and I'm not sure what I'm doing with the uh, tune port yet. So, you know, I might end up putting another S10 or selling it to someone with an S10. I haven't really decided what I want to do with it yet. Plus the ones he's sending me are nice aluminum. So it'll be really nice to uh, have aluminum ones on there. Do a little more adjusting and get it kind of set into place and uh, yeah, we'll see what else happens. I think Mike and Clayton are coming down. Uh, we're probably gonna go take the 5.3 from the shit horse to the car wash, wash it up, maybe start doing a little bit of stuff on that. We have a free engine stand right now because I have this engine in here so we could probably throw it up on there and do some inspection and cleaning. But uh, let's see what happens. So I got the engine set in there pretty good. Uh, like I said before, I don't have those mount plates to actually make the engine mounts, but I leveled it. I got it to where I think it's good, where I like it. Uh, I just put it up on like a block of wood. You can see underneath there, just to hold it in place. But like I said, I think it's pretty much where I want it. I threw the intake on to see how that sits. And uh, I put the manifolds on. Here's the passenger side, so I cut that off, but obviously, as you can see, it's right into the frame. Now, I could notch the frame and have the tube go down or something, but I think what I might end up doing is um, I'll cut this whole thing off and make it so that the tube comes like straight out, maybe straight out and then into a 90 because the turbo is going to kind of be here, so maybe I can just have it and then I'll have the other one go underneath. On this side, it's actually pretty good. Like it fits in there, but I mean, I'm gonna have a big problem with my steering shaft, so I don't know yet. I mean, I have other manifolds and other sets, so I could flip them the other way, but flipping the other way seems even worse for this part of the steering column here. So I really don't know what I'm gonna do. I could notch out the manifold for steering clearance. Tomorrow, hopefully, we're gonna go to the junkyard. I'm gonna look for a steering shaft from a Jeep, which apparently is thinner. I could also just make one too, and go to a U-joint maybe. So, uh, yeah, oh, look. Clayton just showed up, where is he? There he is. I heard a joint. I moved the engine over a tiny, tiny bit this way, which lines up the mounts better. And then I loosened the steering column off and I moved it over. It's gonna move over a little bit this way, which will give me more steering room. I'm gonna make the manifolds work this way because I don't like them upswept. I know a lot of guys say they don't work downswept, but I'm gonna make them work. I'm gonna go to the junkyard tomorrow. Apparently, uh, the steering shaft from a Jeep Cherokee is a smaller rod. I mean, I could just remove this and make my own, get some U-joints and make my own. And I'll do that if I have to, because I mean, I could, I could put one U-joint here, turn it a little bit, and then put another U-joint and turn it back, and it would work perfect, just like street rod style. 
But if I can get some from the junkyard and I don't have to spend any money, that'll be the better thing. I could also take the manifold here and I could cut and weld a little piece of tube in there to give this a place to go if I had to, but Section. I'm also going to cut more of this manifold off because I don't want it turning this way. I want it to go straight or this way or something. But I also got the power steering there, so I probably have to go this way and then down, something like that. So that's where we're at right now. Doing some stuff with the 5.3 because we're going to take it to the car wash to give her a wash, clean it all up. Yeah. yeah indoor, indoor car wash. Me, me and Clayton wash. prepped her up. We prepped it up. We took like three plugs out. So. Like the bearings out. This is uh, the L3353 that you saw us pull out of a junkyard truck with a drive shaft. It is sludgy. If you don't remember. And yes, <laughs> this is like the dirtiest LS engine we've ever encountered. But uh, we're going to go see what we can do with the car wash. What did you drive? Civic. What else am I going to buy? I don't know. That other Honda thing you have? That's why I asked if Mike was bringing his Tahoe. truck. Because we could throw nope. back his truck, but he's too scared to drive his fucking truck. It like blizzarded here last night. Not blizzard, but I mean, I people know, are I driving like it's mind. a blizzard. So, uh, no, I'm not worried about the S15 getting placed. I'm worried about people hitting me. Really? Yes, because it would just get written off. And it's too good of a I truck know. to do that. I so know. let's load this thing in the Tahoe and go to one of our exotic car washes. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. And they serve All right, uh, little mini sandwiches. Yeah. The plan for this engine, or at least my plan for this engine, is to put it in the shit horse eventually because that's what we got it for, but to rebuild it really nice and actually put some parts in it, like maybe a cam and stuff. It is a L33 with uh, Gen 4 rods and it's an aluminum block, so this motor could be like pretty high horsepower, super fast goodness stuff. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are gonna think this car wash is too exotic, but uh, this is what we call our parts washing car wash. We put this thing in there, it's called the Looney, it's worth a dollar here in Canada. <laughs> like we work for the city, two guys washing, uh, one guy working. Or the soapy brush, maybe. Cleaner soil uh, galleries in Canada. <laughs> Found all the holes, eh, Mike? Definitely not perfectly clean, but uh, the car wash did pretty good to get most of the grime and dirt out of there. Main caps are still a little nasty, so we'll still have to go through this thing and wash it a little more, but car wash expedites the process greatly. Definitely works, yeah. Tomorrow we're gonna go to the junkyard. I'm gonna look for a smaller brake booster, and then I'm gonna look for that smaller steering shaft. Like I said, apparently the Jeep Cherokee one is uh, Smaller diameter, so I'm gonna look for that one. This will continue on the channel, of course. The S10 turbo build, you guys seem to like it, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be super cool. This thing, uh, we might start building up later. We wanted to get it cleaned, now we're just gonna spray some uh, WD-40 in the cylinders and bag it up and store it. We're gonna have to order some parts before we start putting this together, so. Yeah. That you'll see in the future, but this you'll see very soon again. Yeah. And us, you will see very soon again as well. Definitely, yeah. 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 We're going to check out uh, a local racer's garage tonight. He actually has like some Fox body Mustangs with barely any mileage on them and cool stuff. And he's a cool guy with a bunch of awards and wallies. That's what's coming up next. So uh, until then, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. You guys do it. And if you haven't, why haven't you? You should do it right now. You should do it, yes. Yeah. So with that, check we later. will check you later. Sir.